Hi there, this is a brief video introduction to probit and logit regressions. I, I will start with probit and, and this will be uh, the first we will look at the probit model as a separate video and then we go on to logit. And previously we looked at the uh, linear probability model and we concluded that the, uh, the probability of uh, our dependent variable taking a value 1 is modeled as a linear function. And as follows, as you can see here, so that's the probability of y taking a value x given, given uh, taking a value 1 given x, or the dependent variables is basically a linear function here. But this had its this, this sort of modeling uh, disadvantages, first being that the probabilities are not increasing linearly in x's, so that that's one thing. Second thing is that the uh, errors in the population regression model would be uh, heteroscedastic. In other words, population regression model, we assume they are homoscedastic, but when we estimate them, estimate them with uh, samples, we will face the heteroscedasticity problem. And the probabilities with this linear function will also be zero, uh, less than zero, or greater than one. So we don't want these sort of cases because they don't make sense to us because probabilities uh, take values between zero and one. Now, what we want is basically, first of all, as I said earlier, a probability that the uh, y, the dependent value taking a value of certain values, say in this case 1, equals, uh, given the x's, uh, should be increasing x for values that are, uh, that, that uh, for, value, for uh, the values of the better one, uh, positive values of better one, I should say, as the, so that makes means basically as the uh, beta one is positive, as the x increases, we would like to see a probability to increase as well of y taking a certain value and the b uh, is that the we should have a, a limit to the uh, to the impose to the probability uh, of y taking a value one so that's between zero and one and this wasn't possible with the linear model that we looked at so we need now a non-linear function and one of these linear fun non-linear functions since we're dealing with probabilities is the, uh, uh, the standard normal distribution or cumulative normal distribution function. In this case, as you can see, this model satisfies the probit, uh, sorry, the requirements of probabilities, which, which you will also call a, a probit model. The probit model basically stems from, or the, the name probit comes from the probability model. Uh, but that's not the important point here. The important point is that this probability model or the probit model uh, predicts the probabilities within a given range uh, of uh, 0 and 1. So the probabilities will not increase uh, or exceed 1 or will not be below 0. So that's uh, these two conditions that we stated earlier are satisfied. And not another thing that I want to uh, bring to your attention is that the, uh, the, the S shape is, is, is a better, better fit than the linear shape. Yeah, this these values are sort of the S shape, basically while it sort of asymptotically approaches the, the upper boundary, it doesn't touch it, but then it's basically uh, better representing these values, these observations, than the linear model where it would have, you know, crossed the, this unit line right somewhere here with a huge uh, sort of deviation or, or errors between uh, this line and the actual values. And the same here, as you can see instead of cutting through the zero line right here it just approaches the lower boundary asymptotically and then it represents better these values here so in that sense we also improve the fit now so more about the uh, background or context or a theoretical context to the topic now the probit model or probit regression the models the probability that the y takes one using a cumulative standard distribution or so normal distribution I should say and so as such the fz fz is evaluated at the uh, at this z value in other words cumulative normal standard distribution function I should say cumulative standard normal distribution function fz is evaluated at this at this uh, given values or at this given z value here. In, remember the normal standard normal distribution function that we have so far looked at in the in the class. That the uh, 
people will be using that or applying that concepts now in the nonlinear COVID model uh, looking forward. Now, the form of the population model or probability model in this case is not different from the linear probability model. So the probability uh, statement of probability that the y takes a value 1 given x is the same. What turns in is the right hand side of this equation. Now this is the cumulative standard normal function instead of being a linear function. So basically this cumulative standard normal distribution is a function of beta 0 plus beta 1 x times x. That's this value z here. So we are, with this we are modeling z instead of a y. y is then modeled using z values. In other words, the predicted values of y or probabilities, I should say predicted probabilities, are now a function of z, which is also indirectly a function of x. So with the given uh, function here, we calculate the z values or z scores and find the predicted probabilities using the standard normal distribution. Now notice this now here in this picture, you will see the cumulative normal distribution here and standard normal distribution here. Now, because we cannot use the uh, cumulative normal distribution in estimating the probabilities, we usually rely on the normal distribution, standard normal distribution, because this allows us to pin down the z values and probabilities can be looked up in the z table. So let's look at an example here. So oh, suppose that the beta 0, which is the intercept, is minus 2, beta 1 is 3, x is 0 0.4. So when you calculate the using the uh, probability probit model, we will have the predicted probability, in other words, the probability that the y takes uh, a value 1 uh, given an x uh, 0 0.4 is the f, the f being the standard cumulative standard normal distribution. Uh, as a function of minus 2 plus 3 times 0 0.4. So that's actually f evaluated at the z value of minus 0 0.8. So this whole expression here is a, is a, is a z score, essentially is estimating the z score. So uh, cumulative probability distribution function evaluated at minus 0 0.8 is, is here, is an example here. It's, to the, it's the probability of y taking a value 1 is basically to the left, uh, to the left of this z value here, and then from the table, your usually favorite table, uh, the value of the probability is 0 0.21, or in other words, that's 21 percent, 21.19 percent. That's the probability that the uh, the in, uh, the dependent variable takes a value one given the x values. Now the first question you might well then you might ask why should we use a uh, cumulative normal probability distribution? Well, first thing is I explained that early as uh, earlier in the, in the in the in the slides that it's the shape of the function is 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 uh, is suitable. In other words, we uh, we we avoid uh, getting a negative values and the values that are greater than one and also probabilities are increasing in excess given the value, positive values of beta 1s. And the uh, interpretation is slightly different here as you, as you remember. It's an easy to use as well, but the main point here I want to look at is the interpretation. It's quite an easy one. Uh, all we need to know is that the, this linear function is now uh, is a fun, is, is defining z value. It is used to calculate z value. and the predicted z values are then calculated using the predicted betas, but beta 1 is basically uh, the coefficient estimate for the x, but it's, uh, it's measuring the change in the value of z here, change in the value of z given a unit change in x, yeah? rather than the change in the value of probability given a value of x, as in the linear probability model. So it's in this case, the, uh, the beta 1 is, is the is uh, delta z over delta x. Yeah? So that's straightforward. Here's a uh, state example. I will skip this. Uh, we don't need to look at this. I um, mean to discuss this, but uh, it's best to look at it in a, in a, in a uh, context in the, in the context. So basically, this is the coefficient for pi ratio and and then constant here 
with the standard errors. By the way, standard errors are interpreted as, as, in, as before, so there's no uh, complication here in this case, and we can also create our confidence intervals as just like in, in the linear model. However, one important thing is that these coefficient estimates cannot be uh, interpreted in the same way as before. They need to be used to calculate z value and then evaluate uh, f so, uh, as the functions um, cumulative standard normal distribution at the uh, at this z value that we have achieved uh, derived using the probability values. Yeah, so these betas are not the standard betas and we don't compare them with the others but what is important is the sign here so what we know here is that this from by looking at this is that the pi ratio positive or increases in pi ratio basically increase the probability of denial of your uh, of a person's mortgage application so here is this uh, state uh, output written in a context so i don't have to interpret this here so first thing is coefficients are positive it makes sense yes as the pi ratio rises in other words as we it is it, by the way what's pi ratio pi ratio is basically um, and let me go back I, I explained this in my previous video but if you're watching it separately now and watching it for the first time then it may not make sense notice this so basically in the x-axis you have pi ratio pi ratio is the uh, debt payments to income ratio so this could be monthly uh, debt payment over the monthly income so higher pi ratios mean greater fraction of uh, uh, income is paid as as as, uh, as the debt payments debt installments for example so if you borrow the if you borrow from a bank and your monthly your pi ratio is 0 0.7 that implies you pay 70 percent of your income as the debt payment so that's a huge value and looks like this guy here uh, is currently paying uh, is is basically their about 73 percent of their income goes to payments to their debt now deny here is the uh, in this case deny takes zero and one value zero and it's a binary variable it's the if the value is zero that means uh, mortgage applications are accepted uh, if the value is one mortgage applications are disapproved, in other words, denied. So these, these dots here are individuals whose mortgage applications are denied, and these dots here are individuals whose mortgage applications are accepted, and these x-axis basically show, on the x-axis you can see their uh, uh, PI ratios, and you can see that the uh, at lower, lower PI ratios there are, more, there are more acceptances and there of course there are some overlaps here so this person here let's say with the 0 0.4 pi ratio was given a mortgage but then the, these people's applications were denied obviously this is just by looking at the pi ratio because this decision may may have been based on so they, this decision on these people's applications may have been due to other reasons too but for now what we know is that at this uh, PI ratio, uh, some applicants were successfully successful in applications to mortgage for mortgage and then some were not. Alright, so this is the brief introduction to the data. Now, going back here, yeah, so uh, it, it does make sense, the coefficient being positive makes sense because as the PI ratio rises, that means the uh, more of our income is being uh, used up for, uh, used for, uh, Mm, reducing our debt or to pay the debt payment, make the debt payments, and standard errors have the usual interpretation, as I said earlier. And now a bit of exercise here. So let's calculate the probability of deny mortgage application equal to one, uh, conditional on the PI ratio being zero point three. So the cumulative standard normal distribution evaluated at that x value is basically giving us the probability of 0 0.097. So we can look up the, for the value of probability uh, given the z equal to 1 minus 30 uh, in using, uh, using the cumulative standard normal distribution. So that's the value. That's uh, if someone has a pi ratio probability denying denial of the application is about 9.7%. 
Now, what if you're interested in effect of change in PI ratios, say between uh, increase from 0 0.3 to 0 0.4? In other words, what if my PI ratio increases from 0 0.3 to 0 0.4? So and now I'm paying more out of my income for debt, my current debt. Now, probability of uh, denial um, equaling one, in other words, unsuccessful application given the PI ratio of 0 0.4 is then again similar procedure equal to 15.9 percent so when I had a 0 0.3 uh, PI ratio PI ratio of equal to 0 0.3 I that was the probability now probability of denial has gone up massively as you can see that's 0 0.59 when my after after the increase in my PI ratio well pre predicted change in probability of denial is then uh, basically what six percentage yeah it's about six percentage point well that's that's a huge rise in other words yeah that's not a small rise basically on average people in that data set uh, had the applicants in other words mortgage applicants uh, had a, a six percentage point reduction in the increase in the probability of uh, den denial for their uh, for their uh, applications mortgage applications all right so or one would also think of this way um, only let's say six point seven is about six percent in this so about six percent of those people's applications were denied uh, of the, if they're uh, only six percent of those people's applications whose PI ratio increased from 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 so about 94 percent have been approved but that's still a huge uh, uh, change in the uh, probability of denial that six percent is huge change for just a small increase in the PI ratio anyway uh, looking forward now why not we look at the multiple regression again so the calculation is the same as before, nothing changes. We will evaluate the cumulative normal distribution function f uh, using x1 and x2s and calculate the z values for the of the probit model. Now, uh, if you're looking at in this multiple regression model the effect of change in x1 on, uh, on the probability of denial, then the interpretation is, is like this. So it's the beta one is the effect on the z-score of a unit change in x1 holding constant x2 basically. And however, however, the uh, change in x1 is an indirectly indirect effect on the probability value in according to this uh, model basically. Yeah? So uh, let's look at an example here. So I'm going to skip this. This is just a new variable added here when the uh, x2, uh, well, we added x2 and that it turns out this is the uh, race variable, so the black. So I'm going to skip that too. So here it is. So the, the value, variable black here is a, again binary variable and it takes one if a person is black, if the individual who applied for mortgage is black and, and it's zero if it, the individual is white. Now, the probability of getting denial given our PI ratio and being a person black is basically the, the standard normal, cumulative standard normal distribution evaluated at the certain values of PI ratio and black ratio, uh, black uh, uh, variable, variable black I should say. It's, uh, it's very hard to keep track of uh, all saying the correct, uh, correct the uh, uh, label for this variable for some reason um, anyway um, so standard standard uh, errors simply tell us that this uh, the estimation is quite accurate this value here is positive means pi as pi ratios increase the z values increase consequently uh, the denial probabilities increase and also being black also means a, a higher given this result higher z which implies again a higher probability value uh, of denial and this is a very highly accurate uh, estimation so it's a huge, huge I mean statistically significant value so 
uh, holding PI ratio, we can expect this uh, that if a person is black, the probability of um, getting denial is high. It's, it's certainly high. So that's a that's a racial bias kind of conclusion here. And let's let's do a quick exercise here. So let's estimate the uh, uh, actual increase or decrease or change in the probability of denial for PI ratio 0 0.3 um, and then person is black so probability of uh, denial given 0 0.3 and 1 so the 0 0.3 is the value of PI ratio and 1 is the value for a race or oh, sorry in this case yes, race is basically uh, the pro no, uh, cumulative normal standard normal distribution evaluated at these two values equal to 0 0.233 now we do the same repeat the same thing in this case by now changing oh this is zero here this value is zero not not one so probability of denial uh, is basically conditional on 0 0.3 value pi taking a value 0 0.3 and black taking a value zero not one equals to the uh, it equals to a uh, standard cumulative standard normal distribution evaluated at a certain z value that is derived using this computation. So this is zero, as I can as you can see, and the probability is this value here. That's a huge drop, isn't it? When a person is white, this is a huge drop. When it, then this is a per, then the one well, then the situation when the person is black. So the probability of denial. Uh, uh, declined by massively. So difference in the rejection probability is basically almost 16 percentage points. Wow, that's a huge reduction. Now, should we conclude that there is a racial bias? Well, but by the way, this is uh, based on the uh, actual data on the uh, on uh, mortgage applications. Uh, the data size is basically what was it? 2,380 individuals were. Uh, individual's data was used here but now notice this although this is a huge data and it's actual data it doesn't necessarily mean there's a there was a uh, racial bias what it means basically is that there, there might be omitted variable bias here in our model because uh, let's look at the uh, in simple model what we have in the simple model was that the probability probability of uh, denial when just the pi ratio was used was 15.9 percentage remember this this without the uh, the value black is it this oh no yes when the repair ratio was 0 0.4 or this in this case 0 0.3 now and this was the coefficient estimates now let's move back into back to the uh, current case notes that the coefficient estimate is lower now as we included black a variable black and at the same time the probability is different now can you see that 0 0.23 uh, when the when the when the pi ratio was 0 0.3 so compare it to this when the uh, pi ratio was 0 0.3 the result was obviously different here so that tells you that the massive increase in the predicted probability uh, when the value, uh, sorry, variable race variables included, included implies that there was an omitted variable bias, and even now we shouldn't be rushing to interpret this as a as a, an existence as, as as an evidence for existence of racial bias because there are many other factors, many 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 other factors that are important in decision making on mortgage applications. As I said, these these lucky people here. In this range of PI ratios, got their mortgages approved, but these people weren't that lucky because maybe their credit scores were different. Of course, the race was there as well, probably because given the result that the race has a significant effect there, and histo their history, personal information that we don't have may have been a factor in this decision. So, um, however, bottom line uh, in this in this uh, series or video is that the uh, oh, I went into the next yeah logistic. So we'll come to that in the next video. Bottom line is that the probit model is much better, and because we are now forcing the probability of uh, y taking a certain value given x is to have a value between zero and one. So we ignore that we 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 don't have negative uh, risk of getting negative or uh, 
higher than one values. Alright, see you in the next video which will be about the uh, logistic regression.